Hello folks and welcome to uh, not a playthrough video. This is going to be something a little bit different. I'm the Lone Adventurer. Thank you very much for stumbling your way upon my channel. If you enjoy this video, consider liking it and subscribing to my channel to find out about more solo gaming good times. Now this video is, well, it's going to be my first uh, screen record video, so I'm quite excited about that. I posted on my YouTube community page uh, a couple of days ago about a solo game that I had recently acquired and someone asked in a comment how I find out about new solo games and I gave a few hints and tips and one of the things I suggested was following people on itch.io and this is something that I've done sort of organically over time Whenever I discover a new game, I Google that game. More than half the time, it turns out the designer of that game has an itch page. And when I find those pages, I hit the follow button and have gradually amassed a, a, a modest selection of people that I follow. And itch sends out alerts whenever people you follow upload new stuff and so I tend to find out about uh, game updates and new bits and pieces through itch quite a lot of the time. So if you don't know itch is a website primarily for um, video games but has gradually widened its scope to include all sorts of stuff including tabletop games and solo uh, RPG type games. So what I'm going to do in this video is just give you a quick rundown of some of the people that I follow on here. So if you are an itch newbie, you can add some of these people and uh, start getting some interesting updates from uh, designers and game creators. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you are more than likely going to recognize some of the games and some of the designers that I run through here. So in order to find the list of people that you follow, you go into your feed and in your feed, you pop over here and click on uh, following. And then that gives you a list of all the people that you're following. And I'm currently following 64. So we're going to run through 10-ish uh, of these that I've selected uh, to give you an idea of the sort of thing that is on here. All right, first up, we've got Verdant Core, um, someone based in Portugal who makes small bits and pieces for RPGs when they're not plumbing. And I'm not entirely sure why I ended up following um, Verdant Core. I think it might be because they were creating uh, this setting as part of the Dungeon 23 challenge, which is a sort of a hashtag drawing challenge that's going on this year. I started doing it and then uh, failed to continue. But the reason why I've included it here is because they've also got a solo journaling game called Three, which I've never heard of. I've never clicked on before today, but as soon as I spotted it, I thought, you know what? That looks kind of cool. I'm not usually one for journaling games in a big way. I mean, obviously, I've covered one or two on the channel, but generally speaking, they're not the sort of games that draw me in. And, the, and minimalist uh, journaling games are not necessarily my kind of thing. But there's something about this one that intrigues me. Um, the idea of just using your solo journaling experience to wander aimlessly in the outdoors and to have uh, encounters, simple uh, encounters, kind of appeals to me. So here's the example play. So having drawn a couple of cards, this is the journal entry that was written. The day was chilly with mist and constant strong gusts from the south. I travelled up a valley and stopped at a waterfall cascading down the rocky side. At the top, I glimpsed something glinting, so I resolved to climb. 
It was punishing work and took an hour and a half to reach the top. But when I finally stood at the top, I spied a metal egg the size of a fist caught between two sharp rocks. Collapsing in the undergrowth at the side of the waterfall, I considered my new discovery. I like the look of that. So there you go. That is uh, Threep and that is Verdant Core, who I suspect is probably worth following. Next, we've got Hinokodo, who is the creator of um, Miru, which is a solo hex crawling game that I have covered on this channel. I'll pop a link in the corner of the video to my playthrough of that. Hinokodu also has a sequel, which is uh, was recently um, funded on Kickstarter, but you can also buy a print and play version for $5 on here, which seems very reasonable. And I think Hinokodu has a couple of other things on here that I've looked at and thought look intriguing, like this one, Bit Party. And it's all 8-bit style map, like a really old school Zelda game. And uh, the description here says, Hello, you've been invited to participate in a beta video game made by an AI god who goes by Alora. You foolishly accept and wake up in a pixelated body. You and up to six people are tasked with surviving and solving the issues of this mysterious land. Survive the simulation and Alora has promised you eternal life, whatever that entails. So it's one to six player game, one to two hours play time. All you need is some paper, a D20, some D6 and a pen and maybe some colored pencils as well. That does look intriguing. I'm, I've got to get around to checking this one out. There you go, that's Hinokodu, definitely worth a follow. Next up is by Odin's Beard. This is uh, the page for Colin, who is a Canadian writer living in the UK, most well known for creating Runecan, which is a, a small, self-contained OSR-style role-playing game which is not specifically uh, for solo players, but I believe in the Warden Saga uh, version of the game, which contains some additional uh, characters and uh, adventures and things of that nature. There are also solo rules. So Colin is obviously uh, quite a driven uh, designer and creator, currently funding a bestiary of monsters for his uh, game Rune Cairn and it seems that also Colin uh, has a copy of We Deal in Lead which is a solo gaming first game uh, set in the Old West so I think probably By Odin's Beard is also worth a follow. Up next is Odd Gob Games and Odd Gob Games is the designer of Scrap which is a game that I've covered on my channel. I'll pop a link in the uh, corner of the screen right about now. Now, Odd God Games, who is also well worth following on Instagram, is obviously someone else who has a lot of ideas and um, is very creative. They recently created a game called uh, Frogs with Shotguns, which is a four player game, I believe. Although I did ask the designer about a possible solo implementation of the game and he did say that he was hoping to hopefully get something out in the future that would allow solo play. So that's a cool looking little game and Scrap is worth checking out as well and Odd God Games is worth following. Next up we've got Stout Stoat. Stout Stoat puts out uh, One Breath Left, which I have not yet played, but it is a journaling game that provides a lot of uh, structure. You can see here we've got a nice animation to show how you use the cards in the game to make your space station that you eventually escape from. So it comes with several booklets and cards and equipment cards. So there's lots of structure in place for this a dedicated solo game, um, ostensibly a journaling game, but one that provides uh, a lot of structure. It's a really cool looking game, so I think probably it's worth following Stout Stoat as well. 
They've got a few other bits and pieces on here that look very uh, intriguing. A Porth Korea, um, a game about tiny animals going on massive adventures. Then we've got um, Head Cheese Games. So Head Cheese Games is the outfit that put out Into the Zone, which is a one-page solo game that has everything you need to play it on a single double-sided A4 piece of paper. Um, you can buy that for a dollar, so that is very reasonable. I've just spotted here that he's put a link to my video in uh, one of the comments down at the bottom. Um, I'll pop a link to my playthrough of this in the corner of the screen. And the same designer also um, created Escape the Zone, which is a more substantial zine game. And it looks like there is some other cool stuff on here as well. Lost in the Dark, a solo minimalist TTRPG. That sounds intriguing. I've no idea what it is, but there you go. You can see that it's a designer that puts a lot of stuff out and is an interesting one to follow. Gnarled Monster is the next one up. This is an indie RPG designer from uh, Brazil who seems to focus on making sort of interesting little settings. So if you're someone who's a bit more confident with playing actual solo RPGs, it might be that Gnarled Monster has some kind of setting information that you would find interesting. Beyond the Borderlands is a, a super cool little setting with these lovely isometric illustrations and then information about the various areas of this world and the places located in it. We've got a little hex map here and lots of information about the different locations on the hex map. So that is cool. Again, this isn't someone who's strictly making solo um, games, but definitely someone who puts lots of interesting uh, creative bits and pieces out into the world via itch. Gila RPGs is a designer based in Chicago. This is a designer that seems to make uh, sort of RPGs that are more traditional in that they are designed for uh, group play but also puts out solo games as well. I think the most well-known is uh, Rune, which has increasingly got quite a following. So Rune is a solo tabletop RPG inspired by the Souls-like genre of video games, um, games like Dark Souls, Bloodborne and Elden Ring. And you're wandering around a world, engaging in tactical combat and also exploring the uh, uh, different landscapes in this game. I don't know too much about it, if I'm honest, but I do know that you uh, that it uh, tends to be based around a point crawl. So you'll uh, uh, arrive at a particular location and work your way through that location point by point. And uh, Gila RPGs has other games that look intriguing. Drifters, Score some kind of heist game. Rigged is uh, some kind of solo RPG. So there's lots in here to explore and I think he is worth following. All right, next we have uh, Sleepy Sasquatch Games, who is the creator of Glide, which is a game I've covered on my channel. I'll put a link in the corner of the video. So Glide is uh, my sort of game. It's very mechanics driven, but uh, you know, it still feels like you're experiencing a story and gives lots of structure so that you know exactly what you're doing all the time. There is a new expansion, the space expansion, and you can also get a Courier, which is a previous solo game put out by the same designer. Wandering Dreams, a solo storytelling RPG zine of eldritch horror and exploring the unknown. That sounds interesting as well. And Wandering Souls, which is a game that Sleepy Sasquatch tried to get funded on Kickstarter earlier this year and didn't quite work out, but they're going to release it on here instead. And this is a preview copy, but I know some people have been playing it and very much enjoying it. I just haven't been able to make the time. So that is on here as well. So Sleepy Sasquatch Games, lots on here and no doubt more coming in the future. Letty Bus 
This is uh, almost like a bonus one because I haven't really uh, used anything by Letty Bus yet, but they're best known for this game, Lock, which isn't really the sort of game I play on my channel, but it looks really cool. It's a, it's a puzzle book, a downloadable puzzle book, and it looks like it's um, unlike any other puzzle book and, and much more gamified than your normal puzzle book. I think you sort of gradually unlock new abilities as you're going and, and the, the, the puzzles get gradually more complex as they go through. And it's been covered by Tom on Shut Up and Sit Down. So that's worth watching as all of Tom's videos are. And there's uh, some other games on here as well. Uh, an 18 card game called All Is Bomb and a couple of other sort of puzzly type things. So yeah, I think Letty Bus is probably worth a follow, as I've said about all of these. Final one on here is Landcraft. Landcraft uh, successfully kickstarted a game called Pocket Hex, and you can get that on here for $7, which is very reasonable. I have purchased Pocket Hex. Did I get it on here? It's not marking it as having been bought by me, which is strange, but I have purchased Pocket Hex. At least I thought I had. And Pocket Hex is a solo RPG hex exploration game that's uh, across three little booklets. So it doesn't take a lot of printing out. I think these are each one of these little booklets are made from a single sheet of paper. And so here you go. Here they are in a nice little box, along with the dice needed and a little bookmark bestiary, which I think you get as well. So that's a super simple little game. I think it's been covered by Geek Gamers. At least I'm fairly sure it's been covered by Geek Gamers. If it hasn't, I'd be surprised. It's definitely her sort of game. And oh, there you go. There is a splash screen at the top. So this is Landcraft Games. And it seems they've put out a few other bits and pieces as well. A one page asymmetric tabletop game and uh, other resources for various games like Mouse Ritter and Fallen more recently. And I think probably this is someone else, believe it or not, I'm gonna say it, who is worth following. So there you go, a bunch of people on itch.io that can get the ball rolling in terms of building up a list of interesting folk to uh, follow so that you get alerts when they release new cool stuff. Thanks for watching, folks. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. It's kind of a new one for me, just a little bit of an experiment and to uh, share the love in terms of some interesting game developers and designers. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.